Ian Anden is a global health epidemiologist associate professor with the Interdisciplinary School of Health Sciences at the University of Ottawa. He is with us live for the next four minutes on 680 CJOB. Doctor, good afternoon, and thank you very much for joining us. What are the benefits and the drawbacks for these rapid tests? They are a new tool. Uh, and they're a good tool. Now, there are three ways in which we deploy testing tools. One is for diagnosis, the second is for screening, and the third is for surveillance. And here's the difference. Diagnosing is what you do when you go to the hospital and you got symptoms and you want to know what you have so we know how to treat you. That's how most people think about testing. That's how the p- current PCR test is used. Uh, screening is like going uh, for a mammogram, right? You go there, the mammogram is done, and it doesn't mean you've got cancer if you test positive. It has to be confirmed by a better test, a biopsy. And surveillance testing is when we do like a random sample of the population. We do a quick test. We never tell you what the results are. We just monitor what's happening in the community by doing this frequent random testing. This tool, this new rapid test, because it probably doesn't have as good sensitivity and or specificity as the gold standard PCR test, probably isn't a great diagnostic tool, but it could be a great screening tool and definitely is a great surveillance tool. That's why it has to be used strategically and only in certain kinds of settings. Like the remote communities, it's good for that because we have a lesser likelihood of having a positive outcome, and this is getting statistically complicated, but because of the low prevalence, it means you are less likely to have a false negative, which is what these tests are famous for. And the same with screening in a long-term care center for employees who we assume are negative coming in is a good screening test that it could be confirmed later on if, if they test positive. So it's all about how they're deployed, how strategically they're used. And in that sense, it could be a game changer. Could this be a game changer, for example, for the travel industry as airlines say, like, we need some help here, and could these be used before a passenger gets on or before a passenger leaves a resort to come home? Probably not, and here's the reason. These tests, these antigen tests, have a higher than normal false negative rate. And that means if you test negative, it's not guaranteed that you actually are negative. We don't want you on a plane if that's the case. You sort of reduce the the meaningfulness of the false negative rate if we have some confidence beforehand that you're negative. For example, if you live in a low prevalence environment or you've been sequestering and isolating for two weeks. In those scenarios, it's it's probably a great test to use. But for a random person showing up at an airport, it may not be appropriate because we actually don't know what your pre-test process probability is. I know that's getting into the, the epidemiological woods there, but that's that's the complication of the statistics here. Um, it's all about sensitivity and specificity. And until those numbers get ratcheted up on a rapid test, it can't be used in that fashion. So we're seeing long lineups, not just here in, in Winnipeg and Manitoba, but indeed across the country. So what kind of people could be pulled from those lines to be given a rapid test so that not everybody is waiting four and five hours to get a swab? Well, first of all, people without symptoms because they are less likely to be infected. We call these people uh, in reassurance testing. Maybe they need a negative test to go back to work and they have no reason to think they're positive because they've been home just minding their own business, but their employer requires this of them. For them, this is a perfect test. So first and foremost, asymptomatic people with no e- expectation of exposure. Dr. Raywat Dionandin joining us live on 680 CJOB. We'll talk about those long lineups live at 5 in 5 minutes.